Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, tonight I thought I'd have a little session with this here, which is my Skywatcher Star Adventurer Star Tracker. Uh, I want to have a little go at two or three areas of the sky this evening, just using a DSLR camera mounted on top of here. Um, so in a minute well, I'll run through the individual parts to this package and other parts that you can also purchase and uh, hopefully the skies will clear and we can come back tonight and have a little session. So I'll see you shortly. My name is John and I make videos on camping, astronomy and walking. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as there may be others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with today's video. So I bought this package then uh, as a quick grab and go astrophotography kit, uh, primarily for putting a, just an SLR camera on, um, but also to have the capability to take a small telescope like this one here, uh, if I wanted to. Some of you may have seen my earlier video where I uh, demonstrated the use of this here, the Omegon Mini Track uh, LX2, and this is a clockwork star tracker, so it forms the same function as this really. Uh, this unit has the advantage that it's incredibly light, about 400 grams, and therefore this makes this uh, very portable and a useful device for me for if I go wild camping and I want to do some astrophotography. The limiting factor on this is that its maximum payload is two kilograms and by the time you add a, a camera on top of it uh, you haven't really got much capacity left because there's ball heads and things like that that you also need um, and you certainly can't put a telescope on like this. So this is a kind of heavy duty version of this but instead of being wind up it's driven uh, by batteries or you can also connect an external power pack if you want but the weight of this is still relatively light uh, it's just about possible to take the whole shooting match the tripod this and uh, a camera on the back of my rucksack that I use when I go uh, wild camping so what we'll do now is look at the individual components to this system so this lower part here this is the equatorial wedge where we set our latitude up. Um, it's quite easy to do. You simply undo this locking nut here and then adjust the latitude here and then lock the locking lever back again. And this part here, this, this is the actual tracker itself. It's got a number of different modes. The one that I use is the star mode, which is the star tracker. But it's also got um, solar tracking and lunar tracking. There's a number of additional modes. Um, twice star tracking speed, eight times, twelve times, that sort of thing used for time lapse although the only one that I've used really up to now is this the star tracking mode. The other side of the tracking head has got um, a few little plugs and switches and this switch here you adjust depending on whether you're in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere there's also a time lapse setting which is in the middle so I set mine to north for the northern hemisphere. There's a couple of plugs here. One's for uh, putting in uh, an auto guider. Uh, one is for an alternative power supply. And these two arrow buttons here, they're used uh, basically as a, a manual movement of the, the head. The uh, battery compartment is in here. And the batteries last absolutely ages. I usually do keep a spare set with me, but um, I've never been halted mid-session. Uh, this little head, little uh, cover here is prone to um, coming off quite easily, so it's just worth keeping your eye on that. 
and this part here is the polar scope that runs through the star tracker so the idea with this is you have to do a polar alignment and that's one of the reasons that I bought this as a, a practice session uh, before buying the mount over here which is a fully blown go-to equatorial mount but this was an easier thing to start with and, and learn polar alignment and such like now the reality is with this with uh, just a uh, DSLR camera and say a lens of up to I don't know 50 millimeters or maybe even 80 millimeters you don't need brilliant polar alignment you just need to get it really so that you can see Polaris above the head itself or above the center of the head um, and I, you'll see that in the uh, the video that will follow but I actually do go through the process of doing a precise polar alignment using this thing here uh, really just to keep my hand in and, and keep practice because my main equatorial mount needs a precise uh, polar setting basically we've already seen the knob that does the uh, adjustment of the latitude to, uh, to get Polaris in the polar scope when you look through the polar scope you're basically looking up through this hole here and the two knobs that you can see here here and there that's rotating the head around so we're um, adjusting the latitude of the head and rotating it around here in order to put Polaris where we want it to be when we look through the polar scope here that's only if we're doing the precise polar alignment which as I say strictly speaking isn't really necessary when you're just sticking a, an SLR camera on the top. Quite a passing shower at the moment so I sincerely hope it does pass otherwise um, the rest of this video is going to take place tomorrow. I mentioned earlier that the advantage of this head over the wind-up star tracker is its ability to take uh, heavier loads and as I've said it will take a small refractor telescope uh, this is a 70 millimeter one I know that goes on there um, I have a 60 mil refractor also which definitely goes on and there are even 50 millimeter small refractor telescopes now uh, all of those uh, telescopes can be taken by this head uh, but initially we'll look at just putting a DSLR camera on and for that you simply put a ball head on there's an adapter called a ball head adapter that slides into the head and then you just put your camera on here and you simply use the ball head to move the camera around to frame your target. Very, very simple. Uh, this setup will work brilliantly well on cameras with relatively short lenses so uh, certainly I've used it on 50 millimeter and I think I've got a 75 millimeter lens that I've used this setup on. If I was doing 100 millimeter lenses, bigger telephotos, then I would use the alternative system. The other potential setup is with a telescope or a camera with a telephoto lens, and for that you need a counterweight bar and an additional piece of ironmongery and that goes in in the same way and then the telescope or the camera is fitted on here and you obviously adjust the number and the position of the counterweights in order to make sure that the whole thing's balanced up if you put a telescope on here or a telephoto lens, a big telephoto lens on a camera, you really do have to get your polar alignment set up that much better. But if you're just using a DSLR with a 24mm, 50mm, 17mm lens, simply putting Polaris above the centre of the 
uh, the mount visually is good enough to get sort of two minute exposure or something like that. See behind me there that this shower appears to be on its way out now. There's a little bit of blue sky reappearing over there. So uh, I really do hope that this was just a random passing shower and uh, we're not going to be set in for rain for the rest of the evening. That's not what's forecast. So um, fingers crossed I'll be bringing you back a bit later on. This is our cat Pebbles, who's um, come to see what's going on. You don't have to be smart. No need to dress up for me to see that you're a good man. seen after that less than promising start yesterday afternoon um, I hit fairly lucky and the clouds cleared certainly for long enough for me to uh, do what I wanted to do. I managed to get shots on three targets yesterday. I did the uh, area around the star Altair uh, which is quite a nice area because it's got the Milky Way running right next to it and the dark dust lanes are clearly visible there. The area around the constellation Cygnus which is another really uh, pretty area of the Milky Way. It's got lots of nebulosity in there, uh, lots of dark dust lanes and I also took a photograph of the constellation Cassiopeia and was fortunate enough to uh, clip the Andromeda Galaxy into the shot on one side and a couple of nebula, the Heart and Soul Nebula along with the Perseus Double Star Cluster also forming part of the same frame so I was really pleased with that. Um, each photograph was made up of 10 shots of two minute exposures each. I was using a um, Canon camera with a 24mm lens on. I stacked the pictures in my usual uh, stacking program, Sequitor, and then did a little bit of tweaking of contrast and that sort of thing in Photoshop to produce the resultant images. So I'm going to show the um, images in a moment, which I hope you enjoy. And in the meantime, I shall see you next time. Cheerio. I hope you found that video uh, enjoyable. Uh, if you did, it would be great if you could press the like button and maybe make some comments about what you did or didn't like in the comments section below. 
Uh, if you did enjoy it though, uh, maybe have a look at the other videos on my channel as you may find something of interest to you there. And if so, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could subscribe. That would really help me out. Uh, but in the meantime, I wish you well and cheerio until next time.